Today we're going to make ourselves a little roll around plant caddy. Now I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of plants around here. My wife likes plants, she likes flowers, she likes non-flowering plants. And so we've got a bunch of different things around here, uh, like this. Now granted, this little plant does not need a roll around caddy to move it around. But some of the plants we've got around here, my back wouldn't like it much if I had to move them around, picking them up and carrying them. So something like this could be really, really useful. Especially, you know, come winter time and you've got to move the plants in to keep them from getting frozen and getting killed. I've got something similar to this that I've got a couple of my tools mounted on here in the shop so I can move them around. This is a fairly simple project. And let's get into it and let's uh, see how it goes together. Because of the layout of my shop, I have a little bit of trouble running an eight foot board through my table saw. Now, if I have to run a bunch of eight foot boards through my table saw, I'll go ahead and move the table saw so I can do it. But we're only talking a couple pieces here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the boards, my eight foot boards down so that I can run them through the table saw easier. Do I waste a little material? Yeah, I waste a few inches of material. We're talking one by fours here. And actually I can't get all my pieces out of one anyway. So a few inches of material I lose are no big deal. Go ahead and set up my fence. I always measure the fence with a ruler rather than trusting the scale that's on the saw. The scale on my saw is set up pretty accurately, but I always like to use a ruler to double check that. Like I said, I'm limited on space here, so I need to make sure that the end of my board is not gonna end up running into something, okay? Back at my radial arm saw again. Now that I've cut my pieces to two and a half inches of width, and I've set myself up a stop block at 13 and a half inches. Since I'm making several pieces, it's just easier to clamp a block of wood in there and run the board up to that to cut it off evenly, okay? One thing I wanna point out here is the end, the factory end of these boards is rough, okay? When I flip it around and I look at this side, which is the cut edge that I just did, I've got a nice clean surface. So I wanna measure everything from this surface if I use this surface, spend a lot of time sanding that and it might end up a touch shorter than the other pieces. If I do all my measurements from this end, then that part, well, that ends up being part of the scrap. Like any other project, there's always some sanding involved. And you work with wood, there's some sanding. Now, this is a, a fairly crude, or we could say rough project. It's not fine furniture. So sanding doesn't have to be that great, but I've got a cut edge that I just made, and on the ends, and, and those should have a little bit of sanding. There's a little bit of splintering on the ends here where I cut, I want to sand those off. I want, mostly I want to make sure there's no rough edges that anyone's actually going to hurt themselves on. Do I care if it's absolutely perfect for like a tabletop finish? No, I don't, because first of all, most of it's going to be covered up by a pot, and secondly, nobody's going to be looking at it that closely. I'm using a random orbital sander for this because it gives me a quicker cut than a vibratory sander, but not so quick like a belt sander will do that I might ruin my pieces. And I've got 80 grit paper on it, which is actually fairly coarse. It's going to give me a pretty good finish for what I want. I've got a chip here that's trying to come off on one of the ends of one of my pieces. And fortunately, I saw it before it did come off. How that chip happened, who knows? But fortunately, I caught it before it came off. And I'm just going to attach it again with a little bit of super glue, cyanoacrylate adhesive. We don't use CA glue all the time in woodworking, but this is an ideal spot for it. Now, CA glue works really well with wood because wood already has a moisture content. And the CA glue needs moisture to set. So that is already fixed. We're at the point of assembling our plant caddy and this is a fairly easy assembly. There's only what seven boards here so it's not that hard to put together. You notice I've got a framing square laid out here and my tri-square and that's to help keep it all square. You could assemble this without the squares. I'd rather play it safe. I, I'll use a square wherever I can to make sure I get things aligned because Although my eye can usually see it, there's always those times, okay? Now there's one thing I'm uncomfortable about in the assembly of this, and that is the way it's going together is we're supposed to put the corners together first by running screws through the wheels or the casters through the first piece of wood and into the second piece of wood. Now the problem I have with that is maintaining it aligned, okay? Trying to align three pieces of wood, or three pieces, because two of them are wood and one's metal, and hold them that way while I run the screws in, there's a good chance something's gonna slip. And just to add to that, I'm gonna go ahead and add glue in here, and that makes a pretty good lubricant, causing it to slip. Now the plans do not call for using wood glue putting this together. I personally put pretty much anything together with wood glue that I don't wanna take apart in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use wood glue. Now, the way I'm going to, to keep it from slipping is I'm gonna go ahead and glue this 
and tack it with some bread now, just so that I've got something to keep it from slipping. The real holding power is gonna come from the screws. I could just put it together with glue and brad nails. Yeah, that would work. But the plan calls for using the screws and the screws are actually gonna be stronger. So that's the way we're gonna do it. Now I've got my framing square set out and my tri-square both. I'm using them together to make sure I get this square, okay? It's kind of a disappointment when you put something like this together and it doesn't end up square. Um, we're not talking about a lot of high structural strength here, so I'm not real concerned about that. And I'm gonna line these pieces up. Again, I'm using my squares to keep everything straight, and I, I can already feel that trying to slip. So now with that all tacked together, I don't have to worry about slipping. I can concentrate on locating my casters, not keeping the wood aligned, okay? So I'm going to mark the holes, hole locations in the metal plate here. And then I'm going to use my auto center punch to give me a center for my holes. Now the base plate of these casters have an oblong hole and what that's for is for alignment. If you, you get one of your holes off a little bit, it helps you align it. I'm intentionally going towards the outside of that hole where I'm planning on drilling my holes and I'm doing that for the reason of making it easier to get the screws in. I'm using a drill bit that allows me to drill and countersink in one operation. Now that I've got my four casters attached, I can flip it over and go ahead and put the other three pieces of decking on. When we put these on, you'll notice there's some extra space. And in the plan, it shows to have a quarter of an inch of space between them. That's pretty typical, actually. If you've ever built a deck, you'll find that the normal way to build a deck is to put a quarter of an inch between the boards to allow water to run off through. And so all I'm doing is taking a regular carpenter's pencil and setting it in there. And that's my spacer, because that's a quarter of an inch thick. Again, I'm using that drill bit that allows me to drill and countersink at the same time. And I could actually, if I wanted to, put another spacer over here, okay? We're only putting one screw in each end because the real strength comes from the four screws in each corner. These screws are mostly just to keep those pieces in place. So here's our finished stand and uh, or caddy. We could use that to move things around. That's got a weight rating of 260 pounds. The wheels handle 40, 65 each, so that's more than me. So I guess I could use it as a skateboard if I want to try breaking my neck sometime. But I think it would also be a whole lot more useful to use for planes. It'd also be useful in the workshop. You know, you could take this same design and adjust a little bit and mount your tools on it like a bandsaw here or a drill press so that you can move them around your shop. A lot of guys, when they've got a small shop area, will mount their tools on, on wheels so they can put them up against the wall and then when they need them, bring them out. Now, if you're going to do that, make sure you use locking casters. These are not locking casters, okay? Spend a couple of bucks extra for the locking casters so that when you get it out in place, you can lock it in place and it's not going to move on you. You don't want the power tool moving while you're using it. So, there you go. Why don't you go build yourself one or three or four? I can guarantee you my wife's going to want me to make a few more.